Standing up in McKinney, this is According to Kells. Coming to you on Tuesday, the 18th of April. That's right, over halfway done with the fourth month of the year, and we're coming to you at episode 398. Today we're going to do, what do we do every Tuesday? That's right, Texit Tuesday. But before we get there, let me remind you, the way you can help me help you is like, share, and subscribe to this show. If you're feeling particularly happy with something that I've done, please comment, rate, and review the show. If you're particularly displeased with something I've done, feel free to do the same or at least send me a text or email telling me what it is you think I got wrong and what episode it was. And if you're right, I will issue a retraction. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. On with the show. It is Texas Tuesday. It is Texas. And unfortunately, as of last week, uh, one good man went down, or at least one man that I believed was a good man went down. Don't know yet, but I will address the issue tomorrow. I don't, I don't know that we're going to, well, just, you'll have to tune in on Wednesday's episode. I'm not going to touch it for tonight. All I can say is we lost our champion in the house. The uh, champion in the Senate was waiting on the house. Whether that was the best strategy or not, don't know. But I can tell you, the Speaker of the House and Lieutenant Dan have zero interest in hearing from we, the people. They have zero interest in even mm, considering the idea. They have zero interest in humoring the general populace. They don't even want the issue brought up because they're moral cowards, in my opinion. You see, if you really believe this is some wingnut crazy issue that nobody really supports, by all means, you put it on the ballot. If you really think that this is some kind of nut job, extremist, uh, propaganda arm thing that has zero support, then you should have nothing to fear. The idea that they shut it down and pretend the issue doesn't even exist they call names to those other people that do support it and try to vilify you, dear listeners, as being traitors, seditionists, and um, oath breakers is extremely humorous considering a good many of them are in fact signing off to traitorous uh, ideas, traitorous laws, if you want to go that route. Uh, at the very least, they have seditious behavior and attitude, right? When you let people stream across the border and you do not a darn thing about it, I'm sorry, that's treasonous behavior. Now, whether or not you're actually guilty of treason, whether I'm calling you yourself a treasonous person, no, but I'm saying that behavior is treasonous. It's certainly seditious. You're, you're uh, allowing... For the very foundation of our country, our republic, to be undermined by people who have zero interest in signing on to become part of the Republic of Texas or even these United States. And the sad thing is, these people actually believe they're doing the right thing. They actually think this is a good thing. Now, I don't know if it's because they're globalists. I don't know if it's because they're stupid. I don't know if it's because they've just been sold out. I don't know if it's just because they have some misguided notion of what it means to be a nationalist or a unionist, but they really don't care, in my opinion, about what we, the people, want, about what we, the state of Texas, want, what we, the Texians and the Tejanos, would like to see and hear. We want a secure border. We want a secure state. We want independent liberties protected. We want the Bill of Rights recognized and supported. It's pretty simple. But being that the people in D.C. are working against everything that that stands for, it's only logical that we would want to separate. Now, even though 
and, and maybe it's a little early, but let's just say it is extremely likely at this point that we're going to get shut out. We're not going to get a hearing. We're, we're not going to even mm, be humored <laughs> by any committees. Now, whether that's our own fault or whether it's just the people that are working against us are that powerful, don't know. But I'm here to tell you all is not lost. The idea of national divorce is gaining steam. The idea of a peaceful separation is gaining steam. The idea that it's untenable to continue the way it is, is not going to go away. The idea that we, the people in the state of Texas would like to be a Republic of Texas is only going to continue to grow. And as they continue to ignore their duties and protect the border, as they ignore the war that's already going on with the narco terrorists. And quite frankly, Our federal government is content to start wars with both Russia and China at the same time. Mind you, they've not gone fully hot yet. But where do you think all of this distraction is coming from? It's our own bad behavior. It's come back to bite us. The chickens, if you will, are coming home to roost. Um, Dr. Ron Paul might have referred to it as blowback, but that might be a step too far. The idea that we can have a global empire and not be checked forever was foolish from the onset. The idea that we had the power, the authority, and quite frankly, the hmm, noble goodness within us to dictate terms to the rest of the world has proven to be false. We cannot recover or redeem what once was. That is lost forever. It is my opinion they will be lucky to have a functioning economy by the time that uh, the next two to six years is up. It is also my concern that the dollar is being systematically destroyed. And when that happens, the economy has gone with it. Now, while I don't believe that is the end of the world, that is a terrible situation to find yourself in. It's happened before. Yet, we could... And we should consider what do we do about it? We have the pieces of the puzzle already ready and handy in the state of Texas. We could, if we had good leadership, strong leadership, leadership that mm, had vision and integrity for that matter, we could be making those vital steps towards our own independence, our own ability to survive that which is coming. Now, you can claim that, well, you're going down that tinfoil hat route, but you only need to watch the news. You you only need to pay attention for, I don't know, 30 minutes and you'll see the very same things that I am seeing. And they're not even hiding what they're doing anymore. They don't care. They fear nothing. But again, all is not lost. It is not the end of of everything. It is the end of one thing and the beginning of another. We have to look beyond that. We have to fight on. And by fight on, I mean, we have to carry forward, right? The Christian Western culture can and will survive this. All is not lost. Between three and five wholly destructive annihilating situations have unfolded in Europe and these United States over the last century and a half. And we still have survived. Now we're damaged. We're hurt. We're wounded. We're, we're nowhere what we once were, but we're still here. We're not dead. We're not going away yet. It can be revived. It can be redeemed. We must fight on. Now you may recall that I talked a little bit about the Benedict option. I want to say that was tail end of last year. The idea being that perhaps for a time, a certain segment of our leadership, a certain group needs to separate themselves off to protect and to preserve that which makes Christian Western civilizations exist and be successful. 
perhaps we need to consider if there isn't something to be gained by squirreling away some people, a remnant, if you will. And while that might be true, and while that might be inevitable, I'm here to tell you right now, we fight on. I've talked a little bit about building resilience, right? Now, look, I'm not going to stray into the uh, self-reliance market or the survival market or anything like that. I, I know enough about it to know I don't know enough. Okay. If you want that information, there's tons of it out there. Free for the reading or listening pleasure. But what I will tell you is parallel economies, parallel existences, redundant operations will be extremely useful. I have zero desire to end up in the catacombs like we once were. Yes, you do recall that in the early uh, days of the Roman Empire, Christians met in catacombs. They, they did their business apart from the rest of the community they lived in. They created their own culture. They built their own culture. And that is what I'm suggesting we can and should be doing in this time that is upon us. We cannot change what goes on in D.C. We have minor influence on what goes on in Austin. But what we can address, what we can deal with is those little towns and those medium-sized towns within an hour drive of your home. Perhaps relocations in your future. Perhaps downsizing is in your future. Perhaps reconsidering how you might function is in your future. If you live out in East uh, Texas somewhere, I mean, there's a half a dozen little towns out there. One of the bigger ones being Tyler. Why wouldn't you consider being close to that? Being on the edge of it. Interacting. It's, It's big enough that you can, you know, make a living. Stay semi-independent, but it's far enough away from the big cities that you will not be sazoomed by what is yet to come. Where I'm at in McKinney, Texas, you know, I'm 35 miles north of Dallas. There's almost 9 million people in the Dallas Metroplex. I could move another 35 miles north. That would help. That might be useful. I mean, that puts me into Sherman Denison. Those are both pretty decent little towns, but they're run down. They're not what they once were. I don't know that they ever were all that great, but... Certainly, there's lots of opportunities there. Be willingness to look into it. For that matter, you've got Greenville. Same thing could be said about that. I mean, maybe Gainesville, right? Half hour north of Denton. These are all opportunities. Weatherford, hmm, Waxahachie. Maybe go out to Mineral Wells. Mineral Wells, they have that really cool hotel there that's been sitting vacant for, I don't know, a couple of decades now. But boy, if you had a, I don't know, half a million, million dollars and... You wanted to invest it in that hotel. Just think of what you could do with that. And its location is not bad either. There's lots of opportunities. But the problem is we don't put our money where our mouth is at. Some of us don't have money to put where our mouth is at. <laughs> we got big mouths too. <laughs> so you need a whole lot more money to go with that big mouth. Right, Kels? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I do. But if you do, we need to look to what future opportunities are there. What does that mean? Where can we go? What can we do? What are the opportunities that we're missing? I mean, I know people up in Grayson County. I'm sure they would love to have a a rabble rouser like myself come up there and join them, right? Imagine what we could do in Grayson County. Because 100 people in Grayson County is about 10 times more powerful than it is in Collin County. Don't believe me. Oh, just pay attention. See, I I talked about this yesterday, right? We've got municipal elections coming up. And the school board in the city of McKinney, or McKinney ISD, is nervous enough that they're actually out block walking. And the mayor's triple down on his support for people that like to protect obscene material being provided to minor children. Now, I don't know about you, but I would call that a case of misplaced priorities. That coupled with the fact that he wants to take $200 million worth of bond money out to finance a public-owned airport for passenger service that won't see a profit in probably 40 years, 
This is why we need to create parallel economies. This is why we need to get our own base of operations. This is why we need to fight back in such a way that we have a chance of winning. Everything in the world today is arrayed against us. But that doesn't mean it's over. The world was conquered starting with 12 men. It could happen again. What's it going to take? What sacrifices are going to be in order? What are you going to be willing to give up or do in order to see that? What are you going to be willing to do or give up in order to protect and build for your family, for your posterity? I mean, the founding fathers were at this very place 260 years ago now, right? They were considering what would be best. How can we best do this? Now, they got a lot of stuff right, but clearly they didn't get everything right. If the if the Constitution was working the way it was designed, we wouldn't have the problems we have today. There are those that critique it and say that the proof that it's failed is that it's either designed this way, which is why we ended up this way, or it failed to work because we ended up this way. They're not wrong. They're not missing out on anything there, are they? Prove me wrong. Prove them wrong. But let me ask you, are you familiar with the tactics that were used to retake the Pacific? You're not? Hmm. Okay. Well, there was a general named MacArthur and MacArthur was a fairly smart guy. I think he was number one or number two in his class at West Point. He was a commandant of West Point. Four stars on his shoulder and in in charge of the South Pacific. He thought out his strategy. The strategy was, I'll put my men where the Japanese are not. I'll take the islands that they're not holding. I'll go to the islands that are weakly defended. Why take a direct assault when I can take one from the side? Essentially, it was a flanking maneuver, if you will, putting people where they were not, strengthening where he was already, and moving on to the next strategic island. The island hopping strategy worked in reverse, too. That's how the Japanese took it in the first place, right? But consider for a moment, there are lots of medium-sized towns that are just outside the reach, the control, the power of the giant cities that make up Texas right now. If you're an hour away from downtown Houston, you're still within the mm, metropolitan area of Houston. But if you get an hour and a half away, maybe two hours away, you're out of their control. You're out of their circle of concern, really. Same thing could be said for San Antonio, right? Now, San Antonio is a Reach is far shorter from what I understand. Maybe an hour's far, you know, an hour away. Still close enough that if you need to get there for something, you can go, but far enough out that they're not going to be overly concerned about what you're doing. And that's what you're looking at with, I don't know, Sherman, Denison, Gainesville, Weatherford, Mineral Wells, Tyler, right? There's, there's probably an equal number of cities around Houston that are about an hour away, uh, two hours away that are prime little nice towns. They would love to have good, solid, conservative people there. And I'm going to guess that are already being overrun in part by, well, people that don't belong here legally or secondarily have relocated from other states and are not interested in becoming Texians and Tejanos. Let me tell you, we can fight the battle that way. We can, we can go in, we can invest in the community. We can spend time there. We can build it up. The other thing we need to look at considering is how do we rebuild and protect our churches? Whole lot of churches compromise themselves. Maybe they took the PPE money. Maybe they shut down for longer than they needed to. Maybe they, uh, Signed on to uh, CRT or SEL. Oh, yeah, that social emotional stuff. Yeah, that shows up in churches too. Mm-hmm. 
What is it they're trying to teach? What is it they're putting forth? What's the praxis of operations within a church? Hmm. Something to consider, right? You know, you can say this has gone woke or you can say this is socialist or whatever else. And that all may be true. But if you can't articulate what the changes are, if you can't you know, give a general idea of what's happening, a few concrete examples, if you will, then maybe, just maybe, it's redeemable. Maybe it's just a fad. Don't know. But you won't know if you're not involved. See, my thing is, and I'm guilty of this. I did youth group. My students grew up. They graduated. And I took time off. And a whole lot of this stuff has gone on in my absence. So I guess makes me partially to blame. But let me ask you something else. If I was one in three, might I have been heard? Maybe. But if I'm one in five, might they consider my concerns? Maybe not. If I'm one in ten, I'm very easy to dismiss now, aren't I? But if I go somewhere or I work somewhere with a group of people and we build up a nexus, we we have an interacting, interactive, and integrated action network, right? I like using their terms. It's fun, right? (laughs) But if we're doing our job, if we're spreading both the good news and the good works, we become a powerful organization. We can make the change that we wish to see. We can build out the culture. We can redeem, metaphorically speaking, not literally, but we can redeem our country. Not in the literal sense, right? I don't don't believe in that. But follow with me here. Texas is not going in the right direction. Demographically, we're in trouble. There's a lot of people coming here that have zero interest in Texas continuing to be Texas. There's a lot of people that are being sent here to destroy what makes Texas special. There's a whole lot of people that are being raised here that are being taught to hate Texas. How do we fix that? We have to love Texas and we have to show them why we love Texas. And we have to teach everyone around us what makes Texas unique, special. Now, we used to say this about these United States. We used to say this about America. But the fact of the matter is, is all but a handful of states already literally hate themselves. They want to undo the very things that made them what they were. They want to reject all the positive things that came out of it. Yeah, bad things happened. There were bad people. It's human nature. But you have to take the good with the bad. And quite frankly, a lot of good can come even with some bad. You don't throw the baby out with the bathwater is what they always said. But apparently in these United States, we teach our children because there is a stain on the wall. The whole house must be torn down. I, for one, don't agree with that. I don't think that's a good way to live. I don't subscribe to the notion that all is lost. I don't think you should either. So on this Texas Tuesday, right, as we're talking about Texas and how can we meet our goals? How can we build Texas up to the point where it itself, we, the people, believe that we can and should be an independent republic once again? That means we have to accept that we took it on the nose this session, more than likely. We have to accept that all is not lost. There is a way forward. We have to work to fight on. We have to work to rebuild and expand our culture. And that may mean some of us, even yours truly, might have to make some sacrificial decisions on how to best fight back. How to best expand the message. To expand and forward the mission. 
I don't know what that looks like. You know, I thought I had ideas of what I wanted to do for the next two to four years. But the last two months has really taught me that I really don't know. (laughs) You know, I got to say, every time Austin gets up in session, I am always surprised at how quickly the convictions get compromised. How quickly they dismiss the very things that we sent them there to do. And then most of us have to agree, oh, it wasn't as bad as we thought, but it wasn't as good as it could have been. I guess we'll have to vote those same guys back in so we can get something else out of them this time. I'm here to tell you, that's a very defeatist attitude. I wonder, I just wonder, How many of you are aware of Robert West? How many of you know what his five-star plan is all about? How many of you are willing to make the sacrifice of your time to get involved and quite frankly, to work to remove some of the dead weight that we keep sending back to Austin? And if we're really feeling bold, maybe get rid of some of that dead weight that we elect every four years in Austin. You know, Lieutenant Dan. They tell us what they want us to hear. Then they do whatever it is they're going to do behind our backs and think we don't notice, think we don't see it, and think, quite frankly, that we won't care. Well, I'm here to tell you. They're coming for your firearms. They're coming for your right to self-defense. They're coming for the last defense of liberty. They're coming after your ability to drive a vehicle where you want to drive it and how you want to drive it and when you want to drive it. They're coming for your ability to protect your own children against the school district, the doctor's office. They don't care. They're selling us out. Now, there's all sorts of solutions out there. There's all sorts of ideas out there. But the first thing, the first thing we have to do is rebuild our culture. Now, I'm sorry if it offends you, but for me, that means we rebuild and reassert our Christian culture. And yeah, I know there's different sects. There's different uh, uh, denominations. There's different flavors. I have zero issue with working side by side from somebody from an Orthodox church, a Catholic church, a Lutheran church, Calvinist church, Bible Church, Baptist Church. As long as we keep our eyes on the mission and who we're working for, I think we'll be just fine. But I ask you, are you willing to consider that that's what it's going to take? Are you willing to consider what sacrifices might be needed to make it go forward? Because there can be no Texan without Texians. There could be no Texan without good Tejanos, but you can't have good Texians and good Tejanos without culture. And in my mind, that means Christian Western civilization culture. And you can call me a hater or whatever you want, but the fact of the matter is, is that's what built Texas in the first place. And that's what's going to pull us back out from the ash heap of history. And with that, I hope you're not feeling down because I'm not. I'm considering, what does that mean? How do I do this? Where do we go next? That's exactly what I want you to be thinking about on this Texas Tuesday. Texas is within our grasp. We just have to do the next things to get there. And I will see you on the other side.